morning, everyone. Thank you uh, for coming today. Uh, my name is Jim Chilson, and I am Director of Communications at the Citizens Utility Board, or CUB. Uh, I take it everybody can hear me? Okay, great. Uh, welcome again today. I'll be running things today. If you have any questions to ask during the news conference, please email me at jchilson at citizensutilityboard.org. That's jchilson at citizensutilityboard.org. Today we have two goals uh, for this news conference. Number one, we want to advocate for state legislation, Senate Bill 164, that would finally give consumers a voice on whether their municipal system should be privatized. And number two, we want to raise awareness about how much privatization is costing water customers across the state of Illinois. We hope that consumers can learn, can learn more about this issue at a new site that we've created called cubwatertracker.com. It's cubwatertracker.com. You also can just go to our regular website at citizensutilityboard.org and you'll uh, see a link for that. But the site tracks dozens of acquisitions by Illinois American Water and Aqua Illinois. Those are the two biggest private water companies in Illinois. And uh, the site itemizes just how expensive uh, the company's uh, municipal buying binge has been for Illinois consumers. And you can also, uh, uh, you're at that site, you'll be able to take action and send your legislators a message in favor of Senate Bill 164. So today we're going to hear from State Senator John Connor of Crest Hill. He is the sponsor of SB 164. Uh, we're also going to be hearing from Joanna Webb Govan, who is uh, um, the Council 31 Legislative Director for Ask Me. And we're going to be hearing from Brian McDaniel, Cub Director of Governmental Affairs. Uh, we also have a consumer uh, who has joined us, uh, Magdalena Salars of Glenview. She was nice enough to make herself available. It seems like we're having some technical difficulties. So at the very least, we will make her available to you uh, after this news conference. She is an Aqua Illinois consumer whose water service was privatized in 2015. Uh, it used to be North Main Municipal Water. After a multi-year rate freeze was lifted, her average bill went up significantly. So Let's get started. Again, if you have any questions, please email me at jchilson at citizensutilityboard.org. Uh, today's first speaker is Senator Connor. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Thank you very much, Jim. So today I join Citizens Utility Board and ask me to talk about SB 164, my bill that would require private water companies to give taxpayers an individual vote before their city or village sells a public water system to a private company. Basically the same rights as a corporate shareholder has before the sale of a corporation. There are communities right now in Illinois who have been fighting to get back control of their water systems from private companies, and they're not winning on behalf of their citizens. Illinois private water companies are seeing record profits as a result of legislation that was passed back in 2013 that opened an express lane for them to acquire public water systems from towns and villages. My main problem with this, with this initial legislation from 2013 was that it allowed the private water companies to buy these public water systems and make their current customers pay for that acquisition. So if you are on private water, every time the company that you pay for your water buys more customers for itself, guess who foots the bill? You do with increased water bills. Here's the problem. Private water companies have a monopoly once they buy a system. And just like quicksand, it's very easy to get into a private water system, but almost impossible to get out. You might ask yourself, can't I just vote out the board members or my city council members who sold the system and, and get our system back? Well, you can vote them out, but it won't bring back your water system, at least not here in Illinois, where the unhappy towns have never bought back one of their systems. Because if the system is appraised for more than your town can afford to buy, you'll be on private water for the foreseeable future. I believe people who are on a public water system, both as taxpayers and water bill payers, deserve an individual voting say before a structural change in their local government takes place, just like shareholders in a corporation do on a structural corporate decision. 
selling a big water system is a big deal because it cedes control from local officials to a private company. I filed SB 164 to make sure that taxpayers have an individual voice before a fundamental service is sold away from their control. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Senator, appreciate that. Uh, Joanna, would you like to speak now? Yes. Hi, my name is Joanna webb Gauvin, and I am the Director of Political and Legislative Affairs for AFSCME Council 31. We represent more than 100,000 active and retired public service workers in Illinois, including frontline employees of municipal water and sewer systems throughout the state. We believe strongly that public services should not be contracted out or sold off for private profit. The downsides to privatization are many. Privatization takes public services out of public hands, reducing transparency and accountability. Privatization drives up costs to taxpayers by forcing them to pay for corporate profits. The huge bills that the private power companies are socking the people of Texas with after the recent freeze and blackout is just one example. Privatization is poor fiscal management by public entities that sell off stable long-term assets for short-term profits. The Chicago parking meter fiasco is a perfect example. Privatization hurts local economies by cutting good jobs, driving down wages, stripping benefits, and siphoning profits to corporate headquarters that may be located in another city, another state, or even another country. And privatization reduces service quality and safety by introducing a profit motive that gives corporate interests an incentive to cut corners. We see the negative consequences when municipal water and wastewater systems are sold off to corporate bidders. When water systems are sold, it means higher rates. Illinois residents have already paid and added $220 million to just two water private water companies that have bought up nearly three dozen public water systems statewide. Rates in Bolingbrook, Illinois, where American Water runs the system, increased from $350 to $959 annually. In fact, a study of 10 Illinois communities which sold their, their water systems to American Water found that rates more than doubled on average over a 10-year period. And this corresponds to an extra $405 on the typical household's annual water bill. When water systems are sold, it can mean cutting corners on safety. In Pittsburgh, water quality violations followed a chemical treatment change that occurred after the city turned water management over to a multinational firm. Closer to home, American Water System in Rockford, Rock Island, although the corporation's water system right across the river in Davenport, Iowa, was found to have the second highest concentration of toxic uh, fluorinated chemicals in the country. And when water systems are sold, Good jobs are lost because private operators' profits are directly tied to cutting jobs and reducing benefits to employees. Water privatization results in the loss of one in three jobs, according to the Food and Water Watch. And these repercussions hurt workers in their retirement because when those jobs are privatized, employees can no longer participate in the Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund, the fully funded pension system for local government workers statewide. For all of these reasons, we believe that giving local residents a voice through a referendum is a common sense step before public water systems can be sold. We're glad to stand with Senator Connor and the Citizens Utility Board and many other allies in support of Senate Bill 164 to do just that. Thank you very much, Joanna, well said. Um, now we're going, and just a reminder, if anyone did not get a news release, uh, for today, we will be distributing that later. Feel free to email me at jchilson at citizensutilityboard.org to get that news release. Now we're going to hear from Brian McDaniel, who is Cubs Director of Governmental Affairs. Go ahead, Brian. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much, Senator Connor, for your leadership on this issue and to ask me for standing with us today and to Magdalena as well on this what is World Water Day. Uh, Senate Bill 64 is based on the fundamental right of all Illinois consumers. It's about giving water customers who are shareholders in their system a voice. Specifically, the legislation would require a local referendum before private water companies could acquire a water or sewer system. Senate Bill 164 is a needed reform. It will help counteract a state law passed in 2013 that allows Illinois American Water and Aqua Illinois to impose rate, impose rate hikes on their customers to finance 100%
of the cost of the municipal water and sewer acquisitions. Cub did a deep dive into the Illinois Commerce Commission's records, and today we're releasing the results of our research. It reveals that since 2013, Illinois American Water and Aqua Illinois have crisscrossed the state buying up 34 water and or wastewater systems in about two dozen Illinois communities. In total, the corporations have charged their current customers $220 million over the past eight years. It's about 160, roughly 160 million for Illinois American and 60 million for Aqua. That's all to cover the acquisition cost for the companies and their shareholders. To put that in perspective, when the Soviet Union fell, Russian oligarchs bought public assets on the cheap, but they paid something. These companies and their shareholders are paying nothing in 2021 in the United States of America to acquire public assets. Their customers get to pay for it all. But increased costs don't stop there. Our concern with privatization has always shown that studies show that when a system gets privatized more often than not, rates go up for consumers. This is not to say that municipal systems will never have, if you, you will never have a rate increase on a municipal or public system. But in the long run, private water is more expensive. Profit seeking investment helps drive bills higher, putting a corporation between the people and a resource critical to life. There is no life without water. A Chicago Tribune investigation in 2017 found that Aqua and Illinois American charge 20 to 70 percent more than public systems in the Chicago region. And this brings us back to Senate Bill 164. Senate Bill 164 is about giving customers a voice on privatization. Increasing democracy is a good thing, especially for a decision as long lasting as privatizing water or sewer service. Finally, Cub, Illinois, Cub urges Illinois consumers to visit CubWaterTracker.com, a new resource we've created to educate consumers on the importance of the water privatization issue. At the site, Illinois consumers can send a message to their legislators in favor of this bill or view an interactive map and graphics tracking the spending spree of Illinois' biggest private water companies. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Brian, and thank you to all the speakers today. Well, well said. Um, we, it appears we are still having uh, technical difficulties. Magdalena, I'm so sorry, uh, but um, if there are any reporters that do want to talk to her later, please just email me. We can, we can uh, hook you up. And once again, Ms. Solars, I am so sorry. Thank you. But and I you hear you, and I am now <laughs> with you. Do you hear me? We, we can hear you. Uh, we cannot see you. Uh, well, um, I didn't know that. that. That's okay, Ms. Solars, no problem. About now. <laughs> there you go. All right. Do you see me now? Uh, yes, we can see you now and we can hear you now. Um, Ms. Solars, I know that in, um, in, <laughs> in 2015, uh, uh, the water system that served you was, was bought up by Aqua Illinois. And I'm just wondering if you can speak a little bit for just a, a minute or two about how that impacted your bill. Okay, several uh, months ago, I retired. I live alone. I live in Glenview, Illinois, and I find out that my bill tripled from around 20 some dollars to $60. Uh, I contact Aqua, of course, I didn't achieve nothing. So in the end, I find you. And really, um, thank you for opportunity to speak because uh, uh, this kind of charge is terrible. I cannot think about, I live alone and think about uh, a family of three or four. I cannot imagine if I pay $60 a month, how much they pay. Uh, and if Aqua gonna increase, <laughs> that's, I, I cannot imagine how I be able to pay for such a high bill for water. And like somebody said before me, you have to have water to live. So um, that idea that uh, customer have the opportunity to, to vote seems to me like a fantastic uh, idea because right now um, the situation it, like my private situation with the aqua is terrible. I can do nothing and they maybe uh, charge me 
five hundred dollars in several months. So I think this action is fantastic, and um, but I feel uh, very bad about that situation I am with. Like I I, I said, from around twenty dollars a month to sixty dollars a month, and and who knows what what future bring. So sorry to hear that, Ms. Talars, and, and thank you for adding your voice to this news conference and uh, appreciate that. Um, we do have uh, some uh, questions uh, from a, a reporter. We have a question from Catherine Bauer of WQAD uh, in the Quad Cities. Uh, people who think privatization is the route to, uh, to go argue that this will help a cash-strapped city get an infusion of money to put toward other efforts. Isn't that a positive or good thing about privatization? Thank you for that question. Well, I, I would say that the answer to that um, lies in the fact that there are communities who took that route and are now having to litigate to try to get control of their systems back. So what may seem like a, a good solution in the short term, oftentimes, as all of us know from experience, doesn't work out as a good solution in the long term. Yes, there is a brief infusion of cash, but that infusion of cash comes from a company that has an expectation that it will make that money back in addition to more profits down the road. At least with your public water systems, there's no expectation of profit down the road. They are simply operating. Um, what we need to do is come up with better ways of assisting cash-strapped municipalities to improve their systems, such as low-interest loans for you know, uh, taking out the old pipe, putting in new pipes, and other programs that are available. We need to solve the solutions that way instead of uh, you know, basically falling for the bait and switch. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Joanna and uh, Brian, would you have anything to add to that? Perfect answer. Great. The only thing I would add is that, you know, you can look to the experimentation that the city of Chicago has done, uh, privatizing its assets along with, with the, using that same logic. And it has just been a fiasco for the city and it's a fiasco for the city residents. Um, look at the parking meters. Thank you. That appears to be it for, uh, for questions. Um, so thank you, Catherine, for that question. Um, again, if you have follow-up questions, you want to email me, I'll make sure to get you in contact with the right people. If you want to talk to Ms. Salars, uh, um, please uh, uh, email me and I, I can connect you. And uh, if you need a news release, please email me and I can connect you. But I want to thank everyone, all the speakers today did a wonderful job. Thank you, Ms. Salars. Thank you, Senator Connor. Um, Joanna, thank you. And Brian, thank you. And uh, this uh, concludes uh, today's news conference. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a great World Water Day. Thank you. Thank you everybody.